Wonderful. Perfect. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome again to today's session of New Baby. Uh, we have a really special guest with us today, uh, Cherry Tam, who's going to do a really great presentation for us on brain play with our babies. Uh, so before we get into that, we thought that we would do our usual little introduction, uh, just so that she gets to know your, uh, who you are and your baby's names uh, and their ages, along with maybe something that's new, something new that they're doing right now. Um, that you'd like to share with us. So uh, could we call on maybe Janet, if you want to start? Hi, my name's um, Janet. My baby is Alice, and she's seven weeks old this week. So um, as I mentioned in the chat, she's just starting to sleep a little bit longer, which is nice. That's great. Great. How about uh, Matthew? And Ethan is past it's now uh, start having solid food and a lot of uh, anticipation and stuff going on with that. So that's mm -hmm. the phase we're going through now. Nice. All right. Uh, Catherine? Um, so my daughter's name is Mila. She'll be six months old tomorrow. And I forget what the last question was, sorry. Uh, is there just anything new that she's doing, something new? Um, so she's drinking out of a mini cup right now. Oh, so great. I, so I just put breast milk in it. And since she doesn't take a bottle, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Great. And last but not least, Amber. Hi, my daughter's name is Ivy. She was 15 weeks yesterday, and now she's chatting. Super. Talk now. All right, great. So we're going to hand it over to Cherry now because I believe she has a slide to introduce herself as well. Um, so throughout the presentation, if you guys don't mind keeping your microphones off until she uh, gives us an opportunity to ask some questions. Uh, and then at the end of the presentation, we'll uh, turn our cameras on and everyone can show off your babies. All right, so uh, go ahead, Cherry. Perfect. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for having me on today. Are you guys able to hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Just wanted to make sure the sound is good. Um, so I'm excited to be sharing more about brain play with um, our little ones. And so I know we've got a bit of an age range from newborn up until six months, I believe. So I'll cover the full range from um, birth all the way to 12 months today, just to give you an idea of kind of where, where your baby's at right now and what to expect down the road. And so I'm going to see this slide, hopefully you can see that. So some questions you might have um, or some things you might be experiencing or will be experiencing are questions around, you know, I need some new ideas to play with my baby. Um, and it might be, I'm finding it challenging to keep my baby engaged. Maybe not so much quite yet because um, many of your babies are still quite young, so they're still fascinated by everything. But as they get closer to kind of like the nine to 12 month range, you might notice that they're, they're just so busy all the time. They're not focused on one thing. And so you might be questioning, okay, well, how do I keep my baby engaged? Um, or you might be overwhelmed or feeling overwhelmed with too many toy choices or toy options or play ideas. And you're kind of thinking like, well, well, I don't know what, what's best for my baby. So um, I'll cover some ideas around that today. And now just a little bit about myself. Um, my background is actually in early childhood. And I've been in early childhood studying child development for the past 15 years. Um, and I started because I was so fascinated by how our early experiences form who we are and how it influences the way we think and behave as we grow up. What was really cool was when I was doing my master's, um, through the research that I found, uh, the stat said that by the time we're five years old, over 50% of our beliefs about ourselves and the world around us are already formed. Uh, and that kind of blew my mind of, wow, within the first five years, there's so much happening. There's so many brain connections being made. And in my experience working with children, I noticed that there is ways to really enhance our baby's development. And then there are some habits we get into at the baby stage that don't always serve us down the road. 
and some parents have found that things they did with their babies at the baby stage um, didn't necessarily support their development. So that's what got me really fascinated into studying brain play for babies and how do we really foster that growth and help them with those brain connections. So I'll share some tips today um, on how to set up our little ones for success. So what we'll cover are some myths around, yeah, there we go. So some myths, um, we'll cover ages and stages. I'll share with you some of my top toy recommendations and then we'll put it into practice. So I'll actually show you um, some activity ideas, how to set up for play. That way it gives you a bit more of a visual as opposed to just theory. So, did you know that from zero to two years old, your baby's brain triples in weight and makes about a thousand trillion nerve connections? Like, if you think about that, that's pretty crazy, right? A thousand trillion nerve connections. And so, oftentimes, we, we think, okay, well, in the baby stage, we need to do a lot because there's so much happening. I want to capture that growth. I want to be able to make sure that I give them all the experiences. But in reality, um, our babies actually don't need a lot of stimulation, and that's the first myth. Many people think that because our baby's brains are developing so much, there's so much brain connections happening, we need to be constantly stimulating our baby all the time. And so if you look at the picture on the slideshow here, it looks a little bit busy, and it looks a little crazy, and if we're being honest, it looks a little bit overstimulating, right? So. For our babies, um, they actually don't need a lot of that stimulation, right, for all those neural connections to be happening. Now, myth number two is that our babies need to have lots of toys in order for them to learn, right? So again, it's that idea of there's so much brain connection happening, I need to give them lots of experiences, they need to have lots of things, lots of toys, lots of items to engage with. The reality is when we give our babies too much, they don't know what to focus on. And in turn, they actually don't end up playing with anything or engaging with anything because they're overwhelmed. So that's myth number two. Now myth number three is that our babies need us to play with them every waking moment. And I know for myself, there was a lot of mom guilt, like, okay, my baby's up, I need to be engaging with them all the time, I really need to take advantage of all the time we have together, make sure I get in those activities to stimulate their brain. Um, but in reality, again, our babies need a balance. So they don't need us to be engaging with them all the time. And I'll share with you what different things you can do with them if you're not constantly doing things with them and interacting with them and engaging with them. Okay, so those were the three myths. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the four pillars of too much, which is our current day and age, which is there's too much stuff, there's too much choices, there's too much information, and it's all happening too fast. And for our babies, it's re a lot of information to take in all at once, right? If we give our babies a lot of toys, that's a lot of stuff that they need to figure out and weave through and try to focus their attention on, which leads to too much choices. Our babies' brains are not quite developed enough to be able to make complex choices, right? They can only sort through one or two things at a time so when we give them a lot of options and a lot of choices, they're not able to make those decisions, right? And that leads into too much information. Their brains are not able to take in all that information to process all of it. And in turn, it becomes overwhelming. They're not able to focus. And then with everything happening too fast, again, their brains are not able to keep up with the processing and it becomes overwhelming for them. So what I'm trying to get at here is that for our babies and for many of our young children, less is actually more. Right? We don't need to give them a lot of stuff. We don't need to offer a lot of things all the time. Start simple, go with less, and we can always add more to the mix. So let's get into a little bit about the ages and stages. Yeah, and feel free to chat throughout, um, and we'll have time for question like Q&A afterwards where I can go through and answer all your questions. So with ages and stages, First stage is what I call the watcher, which is the birth to four months. Um, it's also known as the fourth trimester. This is kind of like um, what many people call the potato stage, right? Our babies just 
you know, are sleeping, they wake up, you know, you change their diaper, they eat, maybe play for a very, very short time, and then rinse and repeat, right? So it's the same thing. They're not too interactive quite yet, but what you might notice is that they're very uh, alert into looking at things around where they are. So they're into looking at faces and they're noticing kind of sounds, what's happening around them. So some play ideas around what would be good toys or good materials to support their development at this stage are using things like black and white cards because they really uh, attune to the contrast. So black and white and red at this newborn stage, they really are able to pick out those contrasts. So you'll notice that they're much more focused um, and they love watching facial expressions. So you may have already discovered that with your little one. If you make faces with them, you babble with them, they'll start to babble back, they'll make faces back at you. Uh, so looking at the mirror is also another fun one. So the next stage is the reacher, which is around five to six months. Now here, they're more alert and awake and they're more interactive where they're starting to reach for things, they've discovered their hands, they're manipulating things now. So um, you'll see that they're, they're starting to grab for items, whereas in the watcher stage, if you offered them a rattle or something to hold on to, not really interested, they might even just drop it because they're not able to hold on quite yet. Um, you may notice that they're starting to roll. Uh, and that may be kind of scary for our little ones when they're sleeping. You'll find that they'll roll on to, from their front to their back or their back to their front and get stuck. And so um, paying a little bit of extra attention to that. So some play ideas here are movement games. So different games to practice rolling with your baby back and forth so they get to develop that muscle um, to like that muscle memory where they get to practice what that feels like, roll back and forth. Uh, small items to grasp the mouth, so little rattles or little things that they're really able to grasp with their hands on, and uh, different musical instruments. So you'll notice that they'll start to bang things together or start to shake things, and so items that make noise uh, really are fascinating for our reachers at this stage. Now at seven to eight months is the inspector. And so here they're much more active. They're much more into banging things together and then seeing what happens. This may also be the stage where when they're sitting at the high chair, they're you know hanging their food over the side of their high chair and dropping it just to see what your reaction might be. Um, and you'll notice that their attention spans have increased a bit more. So they're able to focus on items for a bit longer time. In terms of play ideas, uh, choose objects with different sizes that they can manipulate. So something small that's really easy to grasp with something big that they, they have to really figure out how to manipulate their hands or move their hands, which helps them with their critical thinking skills, where they have to really think about how to move their hands, how to coordinate their bodies in order to be able to pick up these objects. And so that's a part of that fostering brain development. Right? It's, it's giving them that chance to use their brains to problem solve. So they're also really into textured and colorful objects. So look for toys with different textures, different colors that make different sounds. Uh, and at this stage, at the seven to eight months, they're starting to crawl and move. So lots of unrestricted floor time to explore their own body movements. And what I've found over the past 15 years of working with little ones is that the, our babies who have the most amount of access to unrestricted floor time develop the most confidence in their bodies to move in different ways. And it, it, it kind of makes sense because when they're contained in, let's say, a car seat or a bouncer or the jolly jumper or an extra saucer, they're um, being supported. Um, however, they're not open to that free range of movement like they would if they were just lying on their backs on the floor, lying on their tummies on the floor. So offer opportunities for lots of floor time. Oops, back here. So nine to 10 months is the explorer. So here they're getting into everything. They're curious about everything. Um, they're exploring how to move their bodies in different ways. And um, 
climbing is a big one at this stage. They're, they're starting to climb onto things. So this is really the stage to look at that baby proofing, child proofing, because they're getting into things really quickly. Um, and they love watching what happens when you do something. So they're looking for a reaction, okay? So if let's say um, they, they make a funny face and then you chuckle or you laugh, this is the stage where our babies start to recognize that, oh, when I do something, you notice and you have a reaction. So they'll start to repeat that same behavior to try to get a reaction out of you. So in terms of play ideas, because they're so active, look for items that they can pull up on, they can crawl on, really um, items that they can really practice using their body muscles, um, different baskets and containers where they can put things in and take things out is also a fun one at this stage. Most often though, you'll notice that they're going to be dumping everything out more than putting in. However, it's still a good skill to practice in terms of cleanup at the end of the day, at the end of playtime, where you're encouraging your little ones to put things away. So that's the explorer. And now the adventurer is the 11 to 12 months where they are super adventurous and they're super busy all the time. And again, they're getting into more things. They're a lot quicker. And so oftentimes you'll turn your back and then they'll get into something. And oftentimes there's things that you probably don't want them to get into, uh, like the garbage, for example. Um, and, and it's just because they're so fascinated by everything. The world is such a curious place to them. And it's opened up so much more because now their bodies are so much more active. They can get things. They, they're able to coordinate their bodies better. Um, where they're actually able to um, do things that in their minds they're thinking about that they want to do. And so, um, th again, things to climb. So because they're active, give them lots of opportunities to explore their body in an appropriate way. So when you give them appropriate things to climb, then that'll deter them from climbing on inappropriate things like furniture, certain pieces of furniture that you may not want them to climb on. Um, here is where you can throw all the couch cushions on the floor and, and give them a mountain of pillows to climb over. And it's a great way for them to strengthen their body muscles. Um, and at, at the adventure stage, they also love toys that move. So here's where we're introducing cars and trucks and uh, balls, uh, things with wheels, things like that that actually have some component of movement where it'll go somewhere and then they'll have to chase after it is really fun for the adventure. So that's a little snapshot from the zero to 12 month range of kind of what to expect, what types of things would be good as you're thinking about maybe purchasing more things for your little one as they grow. And the question that always comes up is, okay, so what do I do to boost brain development? Right, so there's so many things, so many options, so many choices. I've given you some ideas on what to do, but at the end of the day, I want you to remember, um, and if it's something to take away from today's talk, this one thing to take away, is to keep the activity simple and offer materials that are open-ended. So simple in that it doesn't need to be a very complex toy with lots of intricacies and lots of things happening. In reality, the simpler the toy, the more our babies get to be creative. And so this is one of the best ways for our little ones to practice those critical thinking skills, um, those problem solving skills, because they really need to come up with what to do and how to play with it. And with the concept of open-ended, it's that look for items that don't have a right or wrong way to play with it. So for example, a jack-in-the-box, for example, right? So it's a jack-in-the-box, you know, you have to turn the wheel and you turn it for a certain amount of time and then, you know, a, a doll pops up, right? And so we would consider that a very closed-ended toy because there's only one way to play with it. You have to crank it and then the doll pops up. So there isn't much room for creativity there. As great as, of a toy as it is, there are other toys that would encourage more thought into it. So I'll share some more examples with you as, um, as we go through the presentation. But just thinking about open-ended and that no right or wrong way to play with it. For example, a ball, you can bounce it, you can roll it, you can chuck it, you can chew on it, you know, things like that. So keep it open-ended. 
Now, a few other examples, um, just to give you more ideas, is sensory bottles. So if you're into the whole DIY, I'm sure you have plastic bottles at home. Just fill it with different things, like small beads or maybe some coins. Um, just make sure you hot glue gun the top so that your little ones aren't able to open it. But it's a super fun one for discovery, right? It makes lots of noise, there's lots of colors, um, and they really have control over how they want to play with it. Uh, and that's the same as shakers. So different instruments that make noise uh, with small handles that they're able to easily grasp. So sensory bottles and shakers are a fun one. So here's just some more ideas around what you can do with them. Uh, different, different types of balls, small beads, uh, balls again. So balls are super fun for all ages and it grows with your little one. So at the baby stage, fun for them to play with. And as they go, grow into being a two, three, four, five year old, six year old, balls are still going to be really, really fun because there's so many different ways to play with them. And so look for balls with different textures, different sizes, different shapes, um, and, and throw it all in a basket for your little ones to pick through and sort through. Right? There's ones that are spiky. There's ones with holes in it that, that they can poke their fingers through. There's balls that are easier to grab than others. So a lot of differentiation happening when we just put all the balls in a basket for them. Beach balls, another fun one. And being summer right now, probably have easy access to getting them at the store. So it's a really fun one for tummy time, right? If your little ones don't enjoy being on their tummy, because being flat on the floor puts a lot of pressure on their bellies. And for many babies, they don't enjoy it. Here's a fun one to um, have them get used to being in the tummy time position so that you can ease them into playtime on the floor. So just pop them on top of a beach ball that isn't fully inflated so um, they're able to kind of sink in a little bit, doesn't roll too far, and then just rock them back and forth, side to side to side, uh, which also helps with their brain in terms of experiencing different movements, how does it feel. So beach ball. But, and then as they get older with the beach ball, they'll end up pushing it around the room. So with the crawlers, have it fully inflated where it's hard to grab. So as they go to reach for it, chances are it'll roll away and they'll have to go and chase it. Uh, and this is what this is a picture from one of my classes where this little boy spends about half an hour of our class just chasing this beach ball around the room. Right? And you can see that he's so focused and so concentrated. So a super fun toy there. A uh, third idea is around different bins and manipulatives. So as I was saying, have different containers for our little ones to put things in, take things out. Um, I love the Montessori type toys that are wooden, lots of different textures to manipulate. Um, but even having a basket and throwing random things in for our little ones to discover, right? And then they can take it out, put it back in. So super fun there. Again, if you're into DIY, you can do that um, with any containers you have at home. So this is a, a homemade shape sorter. So instead of having the different shapes like you would buy at the store with the star and the circle and the you know, triangle, which is actually very, very complicated for babies to play with because they aren't able to figure out the orientation. If you think about a star shape, for our babies to actually be able to manipulate it and get it in that right position to put it in is very, very challenging and often very frustrating. So you'll often notice that they'll, they'll chew on it and then just chuck it as opposed to using it for its purpose. Um, and so that's just a sign that it's too complicated for our little ones. Where with this, it's much more simple. It's just an open slot where they can practice putting different um, shapes of rings inside. Right? For our littler ones, maybe don't put the lid on. Have it just open, so a, just a big open um, opening where they can put their whole hand in if they want and take it out. But as our little ones grow and are able to um, manipulate things a little bit better, put the lid on and have them explore putting things through a smaller opening. 
Okay, so that's another fun one. And of course, books are amazing. So starting from the newborn stage, start reading to our little ones to help them learn language. Look for books with real pictures. That really helps them make the brain connection. So if they see a real picture of a dog in a book, they're able to recognize that when they see that out in the real world, right? Whereas if you show a picture of a cartoon dog in a book, and then when you're out on a walk or something and you point out that, oh, there's a dog there, they're going to be like, well, that looks nothing like what we've been talking about in these stories that we've been reading all the time. So um, that's where the real pictures come in. And then um, the book on the right there is a, a washable book. So you can actually put in your own pictures. So you can make your personalized book with different items that they really like with people that they know, so maybe some grandparents, especially with COVID, if you've been kind of stuck at home, not able to see anybody, you can print out pictures of family, put it in the book, um, that way they have their own book that they can take along with them everywhere. Um, and here is just an example of looking for books with real pictures that showcase emotions. So our little ones here, um, we can start teaching our little ones about feelings and emotions really, really early on. So if you have different books that showcase our little ones with um, different emotions, this is a great way to start encouraging emotional intelligence. Right? Talk about how this little boy is feeling. Oh, he's crying. It looks like he's sad. It looks like he's upset. So we can start to encourage and incorporate that language into our little ones. Um, and then the last one I'm going to share with you is an inflatable pool. So here, again, it's summer, so you'll be able to find um, these inflatable pools that are designed to be a kiddie pool, but I often use it as a ball pit. So I will typically throw all my balls into this pool. And what I love about an inflatable pool is that if you ha find the ones that are low down to the ground where our little ones can get in and out of themselves, it really helps to um, encourage them to explore, right? So if they can get in and out on their own, they are able to take control of their play instead of constantly asking for you to, be, for you to put them in, for you to take them out. Um, it's a great one for exploring their bodies, getting comfortable, manipulating different terrain. Right? As they crawl on top of the balls, it's going to be a little bit wobbly, so they're going to have to practice that balance, that coordination, right? And um, you can add some water in to mix, to mix it up, and you can take this outside, and you can, of course, turn it into a kiddie pool where you can have different items in there for them to play with as well. So I love choosing toys that have multiple purposes. Right, so an inflatable pool, that could be a kiddie pool outside in the summer, but can also be taken in um, in the winter time or even any time of the day and turned into a ball pit or even just a bit of like an obstacle course for our little ones to explore. And here's just a picture of a little one practicing, you know, he's just diving head in into the ball pit because it's so, it, it's so um, interesting for him and he had to go over a big bump in order to do that. So that um, goes into just some ideas around ages and stages, different types of items. And so a question that I'm often asked is, okay, but how do I actually play with them? Okay, so uh, I'm going to share with you some ideas around that. So, I don't know if I should stop sharing the slideshow, Margaret, or um, is there a way for me to just to be full screen so everybody can see me as I am sharing? Um, yes, of course. So uh, the best way is for you to put your camera on like you have, right? And then if everybody can click on the two arrows on the camera of uh, Sherry, and then you'll see the big screen with you in big. But the recording will only capture the small screen. Gotcha. So does that work for everybody? So click on the, are you able to do that? Uh, let me just unmute everybody to make sure you're there. Or, or uh, sorry, Tracy, could you just unmute everybody? 
to make sure they can see it. Hi, Amber. Are you able to see the big screen? Yep. Catherine, Janet, and Matthew, are you able to see the big screen? Uh, I actually don't. Awesome. Thank you. So if you want to mute your microphones again. All right. So everybody can see me. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about, okay, how do I actually play with my baby now with these items? So I'm going to give you three ideas um, to kind of explore. So the first one, chances are you're already doing it. Um, the first one is engagement with you. So playing with our babies oftentimes just looks like you engaging with your little one. Right, throughout the day, we go through a lot of different routines and transitions. So with changing diapers to getting changed, to nursing, to feeding, to you know, bath time and getting ready for a bed. So within all of these activities, when we talk with our little ones and when we help them understand what's going on, what we're doing, that in and of itself is an incredible activity for brain development because we're helping them make connections, right? So talk to them about what's happening. Like, oh, I smell your diapers dirty. Let's go change your diaper, right? Okay, here we go. I'm going to pick you up. One, two, three, I'm going to pick you up. We're going to go walk to the change table, and now I'm going to put you down, right? So as we're talking our little ones through what we're doing with them, we also start to build a very respectful relationship where we're doing things with our baby as opposed to to our baby. Because we go through so many transitions in a day, it can be so easy to get caught up in, okay, I just need to do the task, right? Okay, diaper's, diaper's dirty, so I'm just going to change the diaper. Um, and sometimes we don't really think about what we're doing or we may not be engaging our little ones in the process. But while we're changing our little one's diaper and we're talking to them about, okay, I'm going to now take your diaper off. Okay, here comes the wipes. It might be a little bit cold on your bum, right? Now we're helping them understand what's happening, but also helping them make connections to what's happening and what's going on with their body, right? So they can really make those neural connections. So talking to them is, is just an awesome activity all around. Um, of course, you're going to be playing with them throughout the day, right? Chances are you've already started things like peekaboo, um, making different faces. So um, with having a scarf, right? Now you can play peekaboo where you hide behind a scarf, pop back out, and have a big excited face, right? Hide behind the scarf pop back out and maybe have a sad face. So here, um, talking about different emotions again, showcasing different emotions to help our little ones build emotional literacy. Um, that can start at the baby stage where we help them understand how they're feeling. So scarf is a fun one. And if you have a mirror, or mirror play is really fun too. So they can be watching themselves in the mirror. You can have them on their tummy, on their back the mirror props up to the side for them to look at. So some ideas around kind of playing with you and interacting. And of course, sign language is um, an activity or even a something that I really encourage families to do with their little ones because there are so many benefits to sign language. One, our little ones love watching um, movement, right? And they love love hearing songs, um, and so with the sign language, our little ones are able to see the word and they hear the word at the same time. So for example, if um, you're feeding them a banana, right, if your little ones are starting to have food, if they're seeing banana like this, they see the visual of a banana and they hear the word banana, which just helps them um, put those two things together so much easier. And some of the things that I love to do in terms of sign language is even just singing sign language songs with our little ones. So I'll actually share with you two songs to practice. Uh, and I don't know if any of you are doing sign language right now with your little ones. Um, if not, I would just encourage to start with just a couple of signs. Maybe milk, that might be a good fun one to start with. Uh, more, right? 
uh, we're all done. You know, those three are really good ones to start with to encourage our little ones to communicate. Um, and in terms of songs, I'll share with you Twinkle Twinkle, which is a really fun one to do in sign language. Uh, if you have your little one with you right now who's awake, you can have them sit uh, across from you or lie down on their backs in front of you so you can sign and show them what that looks like. So with the signs, it goes like this. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Okay, so I'll sing it for you really slowly so you can try to follow along. So it goes like this. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. So a fun one to do in terms of signing and singing at the same time. Um, you may have noticed if you did it with your little one, they were just watching you the entire time. Because our little ones love action and, and movement and song. So we call that the sensory motor stage. They love taking in different stimulus from their senses, using their senses, and movement is a big one for them. Okay. And so I'll also share with you um, Itsy Bitsy Spider in sign as well, so you can follow along. So Itsy Bitsy Spider goes like this. I'm just going to sign it for you, and then we'll sing it together. So it goes, Itsy Bitsy Spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and Wash the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain and the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Okay, so we'll try to sing that together and it'll go like this. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. So two fun songs that you can do with sign language. And again, such a fun way to boost brain development because they're connecting language. They're seeing it in action. Um, and our little ones love songs. Okay, so that's another idea for you in terms of interacting with your little one, playing with your little one. Um, what, what can you do with them, right? And so what I'm gonna do next is I'm actually gonna switch my camera um, to demo for you some things to do with your baby in terms of activity. So in terms of toys, what what do you do with um, toys for your little one? So I don't know if you can see me on the other camera now. Can you mute your microphone on the computer, I think? We're hearing background. Does that work? Yes. Okay. 
Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my baby up here. I'm just gonna try to find the best angle so you can see my baby. Are you guys able to see the baby? Kind of. Yeah, we can see the baby. Oh, yep. Okay. Perfect. That's even better. Is that better? Yep. Okay. Let me figure out the sound on here so I can hear everybody. All right. So with toys, so we talked about, okay, we can have toys for our little ones, right? So we talked about having different cards, like black and white cards. So how do we actually set this up for our baby? And so one idea around toys with our baby and playing with our baby is that we actually don't need to show them how to play. So we can actually just set these items up for them and have them explore on their own. So with these cards, you can put a card on the left, a card on the right for your little one, and whether they're on their backs or they're on their tummies, right, now they've got the cards here that they can look left at and right at. So here they get to choose what it is that they want to play with and how they want to engage with these items as opposed to us um, taking over that play for them. So other ideas around toys. So, you know, things like a wooden ring is something that I really love. Um, if any of you have those baby play gyms, you know, that have the dangling toys on it, oftentimes I would recommend taking off all of those toys that it came with and substitute it with something like this. So a wooden ring, put a ribbon around it, and dangle just this one item off of the play gym. And notice the difference in how your little ones engage with something that's much more simple, that doesn't have a lot of colors or a lot of bells and whistles. And so as, your whole, as, as it's kind of dangling up for them, the wind might be blowing, and they get to choose whether they want to watch it or whether they want to look away. So here is really that idea of fostering independent play, allowing our little ones that space to explore on their own, to make discoveries about the world on their own, where it's not um, us showing them how everything works, which helps to balance out the day in terms of us not needing to constantly engage with our little ones, we don't constantly need to be playing and interacting and singing and talking and reading. Because if you can think about, even as, as an adult, um, do we want somebody to be talking to us, reading to us, singing with us, and engaging with us all the time? Chances are we don't, right? Like we want to have times where we have some quiet time alone, where we're just with our own thoughts and we're, um, you know, having those relaxing moments. For our babies, it's much the same. So as great as it is for us to sing and talk and engage and play, have times for our little ones to make those discoveries on their own as well, which is one of the best ways to encourage that brain development because they're really making those discoveries. And so with other toy ideas, so if you're into the DIY again, you can take this wooden ring, add some ribbon to it, and now this turns into another fun toy. Um, and again, putting one on the left, uh, a toy on the right, oops, right? So having something where they can just choose to look left, look right to decide whether they want to play with it or not. Um, you know, like different sh uh, shakers and rattles. That's a fun one too to put on either side. Links are also really, really fun because it's easy to grab, easy to reach. So um, having that on either side. So this is for more babies that are non-mobile. If your baby's starting to be able to sit, right? If your baby's able to sit up on their own and they're able to get into this position on their own without worrying about them toppling back, having these items set in front of them um, where they can practice leaning over and reaching for the toys, that might be really fun for them. Um, but of course, only if they're comfortable to sit on their own. Right? If they're oftentimes leaning backwards or falling backwards, here's where I would recommend giving them more of that tummy time or that back time to get comfortable in these positions, strengthening their core before putting them into that sitting position. Um, and last thing I'm going to show you in terms of setting up for toys for independent play is something like this. I don't know if any of you recognize what this is. This is um, actually a mason jar lid 
ring, right? And this is super fun. Again, it's super simple. And our little ones are able to grasp it pretty easily because it fits in their hand pretty good. Um, and with this, you can put it in the fridge, make it cool. So if your little ones are teething and they're, you know, having some discomfort, this can become a teething toy, but also super fun and simple for them to manipulate. So again, with that independent play, setting it up on either side for them to choose whether they want to reach for it, they want to play with it or not. Um, for our movers, if they are starting to crawl and move, you can set items further away from them. You can hide them under couch cushions so they can make that discovery. So just some ideas around toys and independent play and how to set that up. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to share with you is around different movement activities to help foster brain development. So again, a couple more songs that you can do. And these are based on more like yoga poses where it's doing different stretches, strengthening different parts of the body, but also through the different movements, it stimulates the neural connections in the brain on the left and the right side. So the first one I'm going to show you is called In and Out. So we're just going to take our little one's hands, and if your little one's still awake or, you know, ready to play, have them lie down on their back in front of you, hold their little hands together, bring it into the middle for I, open it up for love, and then rock them side to side for you. So it would go like this. I love you. Right, so we're doing different stretches. I love you. Um, another fun one to do is in and out. So many of our younger babies who are very, very gassy, right, take their little legs, bring it into the, their into their belly, Bring their knees in for in and out. In and out. So you're helping them um, release some of that gas, but it's also stretching their legs, strengthening their muscles, working on them being more aware of their bodies, which again is very stimulating for the brain. Um, another one I love to do with our little ones is called brain builders. So Brain Builders is taking their left hand and their right leg, and we are going to bring it into the middle for in and out. So we go splish, splash, splish, splash, splish, and splash. And what's great about this is when we're moving the left left side of the body with the right side of the body, it actually um, stimulates the brain on the left side and the right side, because we know how the left side of our body is controlled by the right brain and the right side of our brain is controlled by the left brain. So we want to make sure we do it on both sides with our baby as well, right? So we'll want to switch sides, take the other hand, opposite leg, opposite hand, into the middle for splish, out for splash, into the middle for splish, out for splash. And so as you do this one with your little ones, you might notice that they're really, really still and they're really focused on what's going on because there's a lot of sensation happening in the body as you're doing these movements with them. Now, the last thing I'm going to share with you is one last song, which is really, really fun for movement. Um, and this one's called Charlie Chaplin. So with our little ones' legs, we're just going to bicycle them. And back and forth, the song goes like this. Charlie Chaplin went to France to teach the ladies how to dance. First he did the rumba, the rumba, the rumba. Then he did the kicks, the kicks, the kicks. And then he did the samba, the samba, the samba. And then he did the splits, the splits, the splits. So super fun for moving the body around. Um, and those are all the activities I have for you. So I'm going to switch back to the main screen. Um, and so if you have any questions, I will take the time to answer them next.
Hi, Sherry. There was a question in the chat a little bit early when we talked when you were talking about um, the reading and the book. Um, yeah. I'm just going to go back. I believe it was Janet that asked. Um, but she's reading her daughter to speak both English and French. Uh, so should, mm -hmm. should they be reading books in both languages from birth or should we, uh, or should be one, one and then the other? So should she be doing one first and then the other later on? Yeah, so that's a great question around language development. For our little ones, between the ages of zero to three, they are learning a lot of language and they're taking a lot of language in. So it's a great time to start introducing multiple languages if you do speak multiple languages at home. Um, some tips around introducing languages is to um, speak one language at a time. That way it helps to reduce the confusion. So um, sometimes, like I speak Chinese and English at the same time, and sometimes I find myself speaking what I call Chinglish, where in a sentence I'll have some English words mixed in with some Chinese words. So that would be an example of what not to do for our little ones, um, because that can become confusing for them in one sentence to have that mix of languages. So when I say have set times for different languages, for example, have meal times be French, and then have bath times be English. So that way it's really clear and distinct in terms of, oh, okay, this sounds different now, this must be that other language. And they get a full range of that vocabulary and that language during that time. Um, and another idea is around having different people speak those languages. So if there's family members that only speak French, right, have them speak French with your little ones. And that way, again, it's a cue for them. Oh, when I speak to grandma, for example, she always says, words and has sounds that sound like this, which sounds different than what I typically hear. So again, that helps them make that connection that, okay, this is that different language, this is that other language that I'm learning. Um, and in terms of reading books, um, fun, super fun thing to do, read in English, read in French, um, choose one book for English, one book for French, and just read it all the way through in one language. So I hope that helps. Were there any other questions? Uh, anyway, if you can unmute, certainly go ahead and unmute your mic to any of the participants and um, and ask any questions, or you can use the chat as well. Wow, no questions. Um, if no one else has a question, I'll ask another one. So we're starting to look at daycares, um, and a lot of the daycares in the area, they do like traditional play. Um, they have like indoor time, outdoor time. Um, toys and stuff like that, but there's one and it's called Forest Kids and they do at least 1,000 hours a year outside. Um, they do things like raise ducks, have beehives, things like that. Do you think that a more traditional daycare is the better option or is it kind of that free play the better option? Like what's, what's your opinion on that? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's a right or wrong. I think it just comes down to what's important for your family and even your kiddos' interests. So I've had um, parents that have worked with me before that really love the idea of play-based. Like they love that children get to go in and just play and use play to discover the world and learn. However, um, when they actually put their child into um, a learning environment that was just play, they found that their little one didn't really um, thrive in it and they needed a little bit more structure um, or that being inside all day didn't really work for them. They love being outside and they love being in nature and getting that fresh air. Um, so something to kind of look at in terms of taking a little bit of your little one's temperament into consideration as well. Do they love being outside exploring in the dirt and um, in nature exploring different like nature items or, you know, the, the whole free play idea of just having a room full of materials to engage with. Uh, so no right or wrong, um, but I do feel like having a balance is really good, right? So our little ones getting that chance to explore the world through play, um, but also having natural nature experiences. So I hope that's good. <laughs> Okay, I see another question around um, my wife. My wife's family speaks Chinese, my family speaks French, and we communicate in English. Got it. Thanks for the hint. You're welcome. 
Cool. Any other questions or any other um, thoughts? I, I have a question. <laughs> sure. So my husband's family speaks um, French and Arabic mainly, and I speak English and French, and I'm trying Arabic. Um, but we also started with the sign language. For the sign language, should I do the word in a particular language each time, or can I mix? Because I say the word when I do the sign to her. Yeah, yeah. So um, with the signing, which are, whichever language you're speaking, you can use the same sign. Uh, with the signing, um, one thing I forgot to mention is that I would look for American Sign Language signs. So that they're actually learning an actual language because there's lots of different you know baby sign language programs out there and some actually aren't don't allow you to say the word and sign the word at the same time like for example for one baby sign language program i came across for dog they were saying you know stick your tongue out and pant so dog would be <laughs> And so as you can see, like we're not able to do that and say the word at the same time, which kind of defeats the purpose of sign language, where we want our babies to be able to see the, see the word and hear the word. So that would be the, my only caution around sign language, but you can say it in whatever language you're speaking. Hope that helps. Any other questions? Um, is there a website or sheet for sign language? There are uh, a lot of resources out there for sign language. Even if you type into YouTube or just Google um, American Sign Language signs, you'll be able to find a lot of them. Some of them even have a dictionary where you can type in a specific, a specific word, um, like broccoli, for example, and then it'll have someone showing you what the American Sign Language sign looks like. It was actually an interactive online workshop uh, produced by PEI MFRC of how to babies teach baby sign language. So we'll send that out in the after session email. Thank you, Margaret. I was just going to mention that. Yes, we can send out resources for that in the uh, in the post session, definitely. Awesome. Anybody else have any questions? If not, I'll kind of give you guys a summary and a bit of a takeaway to kind of move forward with. I think we're good. Okay, so just in summary, a couple things to take away is um, look for times where your baby is playing with you, engaging with you, interacting with you, and then balance that out with time for your little one to have some independent play to explore on their own, where we're resisting that urge to show them how to do it or you know, to shake it in front of them to get their attention. Um, we're just setting up the space for them to explore and then up to them to take that initiative to decide what they want to explore with, how they want to explore with it, and for how long. And so, that's kind of the tip of the iceberg in terms of independent play because there's a whole science to how do we foster that development? How do we encourage our little ones to be independent, to foster their self-confidence through independent play when they're able to um, be given opportunity to make choices on their own and to decide for themselves how they want to create their play? And so um, I do talk a lot more about that in our private Facebook group totally complimentary, share lots of tips, I share different songs that help to boost brain development. So I do invite you to join, um, join the community if that's something that you want to do in terms of getting more resources. Um, and then I also wanted to share with all of you that there is a whole Brain Play for Babies course where I lay out how do you set up the toys, how do you set up your playroom, um, how long do our little ones play for in terms of independent play? How do we recognize how, how long we should set up this playtime for? Um, and a whole bunch of other ideas around play and brain development, because that we don't, we don't have time to cover all of that in our short time together today. So again, I invite you to um, reach out if you want more resources. Um, and some of the songs that we sang today are also in that program so you can have access to them to go over again and again.
So that's it for my part today. Um, I hope I was able to answer many of your questions. Um, and yes, I can put, um, yeah, our Facebook page somewhere for you guys after the session. You can even, uh, share if you want to type it in the chat, you can type it and then the participants can take a look and we can also share it in the after session as well. Sure. The easiest would probably be to go through our website, which is parentinglittles.com and all the links are there, lots of different resources. There's also um, a whole section on different toys I recommend for different ages along with different books. And so feel free to check that out if you're looking for more ideas. All right, well, thank you so much, uh, Cherry, for joining us today and uh, sharing your time and your expertise with our little group. We really, really appreciate it. Um, and uh, I think everyone definitely took away some uh, interesting things today to use with their babies, and we'll be sure to sit, share this session with everyone who wasn't available for today. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So uh, it's a little bit after 2 o'clock now, so we're going to wrap up our session for today. Uh, so thank you, everyone, so much for joining us. Uh, next week we will be back, and we're going to be doing 